How's it going everybody? Anonymous Disco here with a very special treat. Uh, today we're going to be checking out the wonderful world of Carl Pilkington. Uh, if you're not familiar with Carl Pilkington, he is um, kind of this uh, personality person uh, that Ricky Gervais discovered uh, through his radio show. And then they went on to do a bunch of projects together. Um, uh, Idiot Abroad, Derek... The Ricky Gervais show, which I'm going through again for like the tenth freaking time right now, so I thought this is a good opportunity to check out the world of uh, Carl Pilkington. And uh, if you're Carl Pilkington fan, this will be right up your alley. That's the music from Idiot Abroad right there. Um, and if you're not, then maybe you'll learn something because he's really funny, dude. And that's the thing, he's not a character or anything, he's just, this is really who he is. He's just kind of this, like, kind of just dumb British guy who, uh, who's just really, really funny. Um, okay, so we'll go through it, Rockbusters. I've played this once before, and I, I think there's been some updates since. Alright, so this is Manchester St. Ives. Alright. Alright, it's loading up there. But from what I can remember, like, it very much takes the kind of the animation style from the Ricky Gervais show and it uh, puts it in game form and you kind of just go around as, as Carl, uh, the cartoon Carl, and uh, and uh, kind of go through his life. It's almost like, as if it's... Uh, like how you Welcome kinda... to the wonderful world of Carl Pilkington. <laughs> That's great. The kind of the like Attenborough... Uh... The, the character model is so great. But yeah, it's almost as if you're like, this is his mind. Or you're just kind of seeing everything through his eyes. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. I'm not going to make it in today, son. So um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy? I can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Really? So go around to Sheila's if you want. You're not coming just... back here. <laughs> <laughs> one chance. Well, you didn't even give him one chance. No, because they've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> so there you can hear Ricky and also Steven Merchant. That's from the Ricky Gervais show. Um, yeah. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Like, it's just, you play as this Carl that's just expertly built. It's exactly how he looks in the, in the Ricky Gervais show. That would be the first, like, if you're, if you're new to the whole Carl Pilkington world, I would say that's the best first endeavor. So check out the Ricky Gervais show. Honestly, you can find the whole fucking thing on YouTube. Um, or it's an HBO show, too, if it's on Crave. But just check that out, because it's it's the podcast, but they turn into cartoon form. Uh, one of the best shows ever. And I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I'm being stung. A load of nettles and stuff. I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, where's Carl? All they had for sort of company was a calculator. There goes Carl with his friend! What's his friend? Oh, is it, is it, is it Sanyo 4197G? <laughs> so this is one's gotta be about how his brother uh, used a tank to go get some fags. I wonder, is there a talking thing for this one? Because that's... That must be what this is. He Four searches dollars. for the food giver. The one known as Suzanne. But yeah, very much a game for the fans. Oh, kind of glitched a little bit there. Mrs. Battersby. Oh, she just doesn't shut up. <laughs> so you get little achievements too, so I think you have to like kind of unlock everything. Uh, as you go along there. What you gotta do, you gotta, uh, you gotta give him some, uh, parrot's blood. You are! So, that one, that little call that just happened there is, he's telling a story to Ricky, um, and... And it's like about like this doctor called the family and they were like, you got to give him some parents blood. And then he thought he said parrots. So he went to the, he, he put some parrots blood in him and it ended up curing the kid. But the doctor actually said parents blood. So 
But then there's another layer to this. So if you look in this telephone booth, as you can see, there's a bunch of groceries. And that's another story he tells in regards to his father. Um, I can't remember where his father ends up living, but it, it, they, it's this small little community. And they put groceries in the little telephone boxes. Uh, like the, Because it's just kind of like... They know what everyone orders. They're like, okay, here's your groceries. We just put them in the telephone box for you. But the dad, his dad, Carl's dad, ended up just going around and <laughs> just stealing everybody's food. So I think that's what that's a reference to. All right, let's continue on. Oh, what the heck? Oh, you can launch the rocket. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> um, so that's a reference to one of the monkey news that he tells uh, about uh, the monkey went to space, and uh, which is a true story. But the way Carl tells it is just fucking ridiculous. Okay, so here you can see there's the checklist of of everything you've gotten so far. So there's bonuses. There's 18, I guess with the bonus, 23 all together. Anyways, let's keep rocking. Monkey cat. The bolt. Didn't have any chimp to throw this list. So that's one I, you know what? I don't know that one after. The bolt. Didn't have any chimp to throw this list. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't remember that one off the top of my head. That must be from the XFM show, which there's a lot of that. Because the XFM show is what they kind of did. The bolt. Didn't have any chimp to throw this list. Is, is what they did before they went on to make the podcast. And they, it got really popular. And I got in... Do you know those big metal trolleys? Oh, yeah. Right? Got in one of them. Wet knee Houston. And pushed myself out into this lake. Man. This Boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beams. I said, well, I'm not getting out. I've got my trainers on. I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. They did get bored. And I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. So, okay, here's another story. So this is, <laughs> this was his first job. And they're talking about like how he got fired from his first job. And he was like, like how he just said, he was fooling around on this cart. The boss came out, was like, get off that cart. And he's like, no, I don't want to get my new trainers wet. And, uh, and then he ended up, he's like, oh, you fired him. And in the end, he did end up jumping off and got his feet wet anyways. Um... And then another reference, it's, it's uh, Wet Knee Houston, which we might see a little later on, is one of the Rockbusters answers that he gives. And Rockbusters is this whole other fucking thing um, that, that uh, I think we'll, we'll probably just end up talking about later. Flowers for 25p. Is this the horse in the house? I wonder if they're going to have the horse in the house. Hand is shut. Where's the ramp pack? Oh god. <laughs> okay, so that was his Christmas where his um his parents bought him like this computer for Christmas, uh, but it didn't have this ramp pack with it or something. Which you need in order to like play the games or whatever. And uh and uh he was so upset about it he got sick. I went to you phase. Just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did, yeah. And a loaf. <laughs> Alright, here's Twiggy dance Club. I could eat. I could eat a night. I could eat. 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 I could eat, I could eat. <laughs> That's awesome. So essentially, what happened there was he, um,. He said in the show that he could eat a knob at night. It's his whole reason why they why he said that. But he, he he was like I he's talking about like Survivor or whatever, and he's like I I couldn't eat a knob during the day, but I could eat a knob at night. And then Ricky's like, okay, whoever's listening, loop that and make it into this like house beat song, um, just to make it like it because it's it obviously sounds so gay, um. And that's the first time I ever heard uh, 
ever heard that track. That's good. Sounds great, actually. Remember uh, Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. My mum's into wow. Nanas and stuff. <laughs> Remember uh, Victoria Plum? My mum's into Nanas and stuff. <laughs> So that's a really good story to tell. So Victoria Plum is essentially... It's a great story, actually. Um, he bought... <laughs> his mom was into gnomes and stuff, like he said. Milky's making... This is such a game for the fans, dude. And I just, like... I'm sorry if this is just really esoteric, uh, but, like... This is great, man. <laughs> like, because I just... I do nothing but listen to the fucking XFM show and their podcast. And it's so good. Anyways, Victoria Plum, though. What happened there was he bought his mom a gnome and he was just like it was for Christmas and he was just like oh you know what I'll walk her by the shop where uh, I got it and I'll, I'll ask her about it and and see if she likes it so he did and he walked his mom past and he was like what do you think of this gnome and she was like oh it's awful and he was like, and that was the gnome he bought her and he still ended up giving it to her on Christmas Day. And just, it's just a hilarious clip, man. I think, like, really what I, I think the takeaway is if, if you haven't um, uh, watched or played any of the, the Carl stuff, uh, definitely do it because it is. Turns out, little monkey fella. Oh, fuck, you can play as a monkey. Crazy. But yeah, definitely go and listen to the go and listen to the show. The boat didn't have any chintz there. Show this. Is. Go and listen to the show. Go and because it, it's just hilarious. It, if this is um, a, a doing it for you, then I, I think you definitely want to check it out. Turns out little monkey fella. But yeah, I'd rather play as Carl. I want to play as Carl. Alf's got one in the back of a dirty old van. <laughs> Alf's mattress is Uncle Alf. Had to get a mattress off him. And, uh, it, it was in the back of a dirty old van. And uh, his girlfriend was really pissed off. Oh, here's the horse mouse. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 <laughs> That's a kid who list, used to live in his estate, or and then he apparently took a horse in the house because he was selling these flowers for 25p. He was going around selling the flowers for 25p, and uh, and while he's doing it, he discovered that somebody uh, was bringing a horse in the house. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> Change his name to Bubba 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 Bubba. <laughs> Cow hit by train lands on farmer's wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. Just like the, the the dynamic between the three of them too. Like a lot of it, so much of it is like just Ricky and Carl, um, or Ricky and Steve just picking well, on Carl. You need the entrance to my garden alone. All right, that was the cryptic clue. Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth. Gareth. Uh, well, well, we'll get off. Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. That's another Rockbusters moment there, which is just, it's just the most ridiculous fucking quiz ever. It's so funny. It's actually one of my favorite. Because essentially, okay, I'll just explain it a little bit. What he does is he, um, you get a cryptic clue in the initial of a band. Uh, and, and through the, with the initial and the cryptic clue, you have to guess what the band is. So, for example, like, I'm just trying to think of an actual good one he does. Uh, so, okay, so he's like, I don't have enough money for those condoms, JC, and it's Johnny Cash. Or, uh, he goes like, that will never get off the ground, LZ, Led Zeppelin or something. So those are some decent ones, even though they're super easy. Uh, but he then he starts like just come up with these ridiculous ones, like Wet Me Houston. We saw earlier, and Wet Me Houston, it's like I, uh, which is supposed to be Whitney Houston, obviously. Uh, he's like, I tripped and slipped 
and fell in a puddle in Texas, and I got my leg wet, or I got my leg, you know, anyways, and it wet me in Houston. It's just, just awful. Just awful. All right, let's see how we're doing on that checklist. We don't have to find every little thing. I think there's some other levels to check out. The head like a fucking orange. Uh, we're still missing. We're missing a few. So let's take. We can take another whip round. Let's see if. Uh, oh, Chanel, wait. I've got another perfume out. New odor. New there's odor. not a group called New Odor. No, it's, it's cryptic. No, it's, it's not. Cryptic. That doesn't mean cryptic. <laughs> What's funny about that is it's supposed to be new o order, not new odor. But what's funny is about that one is Steve actually before the, the quiz he's like, he's like we've had somebody call in and they said if this turns out to be new odor and meeting new order, he's never listening again. And then it does. Oh my god, it's so funny. He's gone and written it down again. That's the jingle for Carl's diary. Mrs. Buttersby. Oh, right, oh she just doesn't shut up. Mrs. Buttersby, she's like a ghost. A ghost that visited Carl in the night. KP Plumbing, we've seen. Um, oh, Carl's Two died. guns. Moaning about the boiler again. That's, that's starting to play up. That's my problem. Suzanne's his girlfriend. Suzanne's oh, moaning about the boiler again. That's that's starting to play up. Oh, yeah, that's my nice problem. Uh, another good show though. Uh, it's mostly clips from like XFM and the Rick and Gervais show. Uh, but another really good Carl one if you want to go a little deeper. You can almost watch it in tandem with uh, the Rick and Gervais show because it's I think kind of happens during it or after but he is idiot abroad and idiot abroad is essentially he um they send him around the world the first season they send him to the seven wonders we've seen that one we've seen that one I, so it's i'm surprised there's no so far i can't see there's no uh clip for twiggy's dance club i could eat i could eat i could eat at night i could eat That's funny, that's the episode I just watched when they're asking him all the James lifting questions. Okay. So, I've seen a lot of what's going on over here. There's definitely a few secrets that I've missed. Uh, but why don't we move on? Because this is supposed to be like Manchester. I think this is kind of supposed to be like the estate he grew up at. Because he's, he's from Manchester. Um, but let's move on. Let's see if we can go to London. And I haven't actually seen that. When I played it, it was just he that. He his way back to London. This is great. The love of two brains. This is the movie idea he comes Clive up with. Warren, Rebecca De Mornay. The love of two brains. That is the worst idea I have ever heard for any piece of art. That's, yeah, that's what they call the movie, I think. Or one of his movies. There's two doors, Carl. Yep. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? Can't walk through the keyhole or anything. I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> So that one is actually like, it's from the Rick DeVay show and it's like kind of this logic puzzle kind of thing. It, uh, it took me a while to understand how it works. And I didn't even know if I could do it justice explaining it. But it's kind of like, one always lies, one always tells the truth. And what you have to do is you have to say, if I was 
if I was to ask the person standing beside you what door they were guarding, what would they say? If I was to ask the person beside you what door you were guarding, what would they say? And then whatever the answer that they give is the answer. It's really fucking complicated. It's really fucking weird and complicated. And it's, it's I, I can't do it just in explaining it. And that's the thing I, I might not even fully understand how the fuck it works. But it's a really funny moment in the show. Cheeky Freak of the Week has been canceled. The next week, The Rice is Right. <laughs> the Cheeky Freak of the Week was, um, um, one of the segments of the show they did each week. They would have, uh, they'd have, um, another freak, Cheeky Freak. Uh, this is the. This looks like the the set of the Ricky Gervais show, actually. Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais yeah, show yeah. with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Hmm? That's the opening uh, of of the Ricky Gervais show. The, the cartoon. Suzanne called me to say she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. <laughs> Classic. Finchley Road. Hmm, don't remember that reference. I'll just pop my head. <laughs> Paper round. I'd still Paper say it's the best round. job I've ever had. <laughs> and he means it. Why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? D S, all right. D trout spinners. Right. <laughs> right. That's, that's the last time we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no. It is. <laughs> Did it supposed to be Detroit spinners? Detrout spinners because what he's what he thinks is happening is because if he says it with a Jamaican accent it comes out as like instead of Detroit Detrout Detrout spinners <laughs> and the fat baby that they found that was on the telly right well what was that it's just a little fat baby that uh, uh I don't know what it is. it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It was what? on the telly. It was on the telly. And but what was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, <laughs> fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, tell me about the fat baby on telly. <laughs> Ricky gets so mad at him, man. He just like he just he can't when he just can't articulate himself or like explain what he means or and just like kind of the sheer. Stupidity of some of the things he said. Hey, Susan, what's going on? He's got you can go full Carl Orange Head. That's fucking awesome. Jerv Smirch Pilkey. That's all their nicknames. Right, this is uh, he goes to a leg rubber and they all make fun of him because he like they're they're saying it's like in the back of a laundromat. So I went to see this professional uh, leg rubber. Professional um, leg rubber. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point. He said you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them, rather than them being in charge of the so brain. So all you did was you met a person as stupid as you. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me what he said. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? Thank Your me. blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking. You've got, you got jealous, jealous bones. bones. <laughs> you're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> Jeffen. Oh, there's that's the fat baby. Okay. This is Mr. Freeze when he choked on the Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze pops. Nah, forget it. What's this? Hey guys, gangly. Steve, it could be your brother. Oh, he's done you again, Steve. <laughs> right, he's always making fun of Steve because he, uh. Steve's kind of weird looking too. I love Tic Tacs, me. I must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tac. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. You'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's tinging its way up the tube! 
It's jingin' its way up the tube. <laughs> Ding dong, ping pong. It's jingin' its, its way up the tube. <laughs> I've always had a special place for the Tic Tac anecdote because that was actually the first thing of uh, I had ever heard of Carl or, um, and it's still to this day one of my favorites because I just think it's one of the funniest moments when uh, that Tic Tac story he tells. This is hard work now. Where is this gonna lead us? Boys. What's that? If you're gonna have this, where's the bit of the other? Boys. What's that? If you're gonna have this, where's the bit of the other? Yeah, he finds. You think he, you remember where he is? He's like the dentist or doctors or something. He finds like they have like a gay magazine. Called boys. Oh, did I die? I didn't know if that would kill me or not. The love of two brains. Alright, where's that checklist? Let's see how we're making out. Mission Impossible 8, starring the bones and skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's Brown. <laughs> Mission Impossible 8, <laughs> from the people who brought you the first seven and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven, but with Brian doing all the lights. Ted Danson as Brian, as Tom Cruise, as and Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible 8. Another one of Carl's movies ideas with it. Making fun of. So yeah, there's a lot here. We don't like I said, we won't have to go around. Once I don't know, if we hit a wall, we'll uh, we'll keep um we'll keep on tracking, but see as much as we can. Saw that one. Yeah, it either brought us great music though. There's a shadow somewhere. <laughs> it's already good, isn't it? I'm loving it already. Right, there's a shadow. Yeah. And uh, it's on a quiet road. I'm guessing somewhere like Boston. And it was pushing people off the bike. <laughs> it was what? I thought I'll find out more for that next week. <laughs> right, see you then. <laughs> That's another thing about Carl is he's very much like a believer in um, ghost and the supernatural and stuff, and and Ricky and Steve, you know, don't have any of it. There's someone working eye up. Who's that? Who's the fella up there? Right? Yeah. And that's yeah. where that saying about, um, you know, like there's a lot of tower blocks and that's that, like the, the, the chimp off the old block. <laughs> chimp. Uh, that's monkey news. Chimp off the old block. Yeah, so they, I don't know if we've quite talked about it yet, but they did have a segment uh, called Monkey News, and every week they would have a different story about a monkey that were, like, usually, like, just made up and ridiculous, and that's that's one that's about uh, a chimp builder that build buildings. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fish mongers at all the different fish they had. It's like a kid's TV show. I know! Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they <laughs> <I> said. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, can I go in here? Ah, uh, no. Top shop. But if you go into a, a toffee shop, he's like no of different... <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? You're in a, you're in a, you're in a fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in, the, uh, in the 19th century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go into a toffee no. shop. Good morrow. Well, forget the toffee shop. Can I have some of your finest Oxfordshire toffees? <laughs> you just come from the candlestick maker. <laughs> Cobbler. Suzanne Shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> The word cobbler. I didn't even know cobbler still existed. I only ever see that in Christmas films. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly. Because last time, last time you were going to the toffee shop. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> Look behind BB. Cryptic clue. Stiller, Affleck, and. 
Kingsley are all giants. Initials B B. Ben. Ben Stiller, Ben Affleck, Ben Kingsley are all giants. Ben. Look behind B B. Ben. Oh man. Ben Big? Big Ben! Big Ben! Look behind Big Ben. There we go. Alright, where's Big Ben? I, I saw it earlier. There we go. Actually, I don't know if I've done the... Sick of seeing it. Like a pylon. There's apparently there's something behind here. There's a secret behind here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm using me fable. A lot of them though. I'll take one more uh, little quick look around. Oh, what's over here? Stay green, stay in the woods, stay safe. That's uh. <laughs> he's like talking. He's talking like lizards or something. I'm not bothered. Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a shaven chimp with a head like a orange. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's another thing I don't know. Houston Station is now open. Please mind the gap. Oh, can I go in? Is it now open? Um... Yeah, I guess that's another... I don't know if we necessarily went over, but, uh... Yeah, he has a perfectly round head. And they always say it looks like an orange. It's so round. Hey, there's the last orange. You must leave. Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of hey, you, you get a what second would you do with this? How would I know which one I was? <laughs> because you'd be you. History of the baguette. During the invasion of Russia in the Napoleon Napoleonic uh, War, the traditional bulky French bread took up a lot of valuable space in this soldier's backpack, which in the severe climate was essential for carrying extra warm clothes. Napoleon thus decided to have a new shape bread produced that could be transported more practically down the trouser legs for the soldiers. And so we have the traditional baguette shape as we know today. The history of the baguette. That's not true! It is. No, it's not! I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read it? It scrawled on the wall in graffiti. Yeah! Oh, nice. You can turn the doppelganger off and on. Top of candy. I don't remember that one. I don't know if I ever heard the history of the baguette. Uh, the history of the baguette. What? That's so interesting. Like, you know, you still, like. And then, you know, like, even I, I've, 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 uh, watched it and, for some reason, uh, Bloodborne was just, oh, I didn't install Bloodborne. Must have been my brother. We've been playing Elden Ring and now he's on, like, this whole, like, from software kick. He wants to go back and play Bloodborne again. Um, but, 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 oh man, how cool would it be if they got back together and did another, like, two episodes of the podcast? I would fucking die, dude. That's like, them coming back and doing another podcast is better than, like, like any band reuniting and doing a tour or any other show coming back. Like, I, I want that more than anything. Okay, um... Oh, there's monkey news. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Football team. A monkey football team? Yeah, in mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Got all the team members there. Right. <laughs> right. Little goalkeeper. Apparently he's on transfer from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently he's a holder of PhD of physics. 
Oh man, too good. Okay. I still didn't find what was behind Big Ben there. Uh, but maybe I understood the clue wrong. But uh, let's go back because I think there's one other thing I want to see. One other thing I want to see. And here we see the round-headed chimp in his natural habitat. He has no idea where he's going. Whoever they got to do that was was great. Uh, this is good, just a good Admiral impression. All right, and now see. we say farewell to our chimp-like friend as he continues on his journey. Goodbye. That's awesome. So I just want to see uh, what Rockbusters uh -huh. is. If you can play Rockbusters or something, because if so, that's fucking awesome. That's not an actual one. This guy, whoever came up with the game, came up with his own because they, I don't think Post Malone was ever uh, Postman Alone is what he. Okay, cool. This is awesome. I'm so about this. Okay, continue. Um, and we'll the Pepper second Pepper. one. What's going on there? They're all facing the same way. What's going on there? O D. They're all facing the same way. What's going on there? Odd direction. I know, is that a band? Odd Direction? One Direction. One Direction. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. One Direction. That works. Yeah. Old shirt singer, Nick Old Shirt Singer. <laughs> That's great, man. This guy really got in the mind of Carl with, with these clues. Right. Uh, Come on. Uh, Come on. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. The cryptic clue is that vehicle is close. Oh wait, no, it isn't. And. Vehicle is close. Oh wait, no, what is it? What is it gotta be? Um, N, 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 N. I don't know. Let's see. Nirvana. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. None of them work. None <laughs> of them work. Another <laughs> pile of. <laughs> That's great. Nir Nirvana. Like it's like Nirvana. Nah. <laughs> That's great. I no, really got it. The initials of the band of the artist are FF. FF, okay. These lot like chucking their meals about. F. Franz Ferdinand is what I'm going to guess because that's the only band I can think of. FF. I have no idea how that. I have no idea how that is the clue, though. That one, that one works. Oh, of course it is. Uh, no, it doesn't. Years. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Of course it's Food Fighters, though. Of course it. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Okay. Who is it? 
sing songs and that. Right? <laughs> Look at the stage is falling apart. That dancing Elliot kid needs some mascara. Be -be. Billie Eilish. I don't, yeah, because Billy I I don't know, Billy Eilish. I don't, Eilish. don't know where to start. Uh, if, we, if we had more time, don't worry. I'd throw him out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because they, they are just they're such bad clues. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist. What is it? I know, I've got it already. Right, That's Amy. rubbish, too easy. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. oh, fuck, now I feel like an idiot. Because of course it's Green Day. I'm not a big Green Day fan, so maybe that's why. I know <laughs> they look... <laughs> that was a crossroads clue in the times! I know they look pretty, but don't put them in a sandwich, PJ. Man, I don't know, uh, PJ, I know they look pretty, but don't put them in a sandwich. Pearl Jam. What? No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> that Potter right. lad is right well? having a well good time. Of course I haven't. The initials AG. That pa <laughs> Harry. Harry. Harry good? Harry great? I, I have no idea. This Ariana is rubbish. Bondi. I mean, I, I, I tell you, I, no, this isn't even funny, though. I mean, they're no good at all. <laughs> it's not cryptic, it's wrong. <laughs> we'll leave that. No, no, don't move on! <laughs> Harry have a grand day. And the last one. MD, you talk to someone on the phone when you have an soap. Talk to someone when you're having a soap. Um, and bath. Meeting bath. I have no idea. Right, Michael you're not doing it. You're never doing it. You've blown it. You see, you sneak that one in. You're never doing what was <laughs> again. No, no. Right, you're not doing it. You're never doing it. You've blown it. You see, you sneak that one in. You're never doing what was again. No, no. Uh, that's great. My call bubbly. But that's actually, like, I think this, whoever uh, made this game did an amazing job of, of creating those clues because that's actually what they would be like. That's that's the perfect example that you could have given for that. All right. So who's, who's the winner? It's you. Let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what we've got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's either warm in here or, or this isn't the most interesting conversation we've ever had. Okay. Oh, it's still knocking about the best air guitar volume two. Sure. <laughs> Rubbish. Uh, we've also got Ladder 49. There it is. Brilliant. Oh, giving away one a week for the last <laughs> six weeks. Yes. Yeah. That's the next FM mouse map. Oh, they're, they're as common as mud. Oh, I, I would love that actually. How cool would that be? That mouse mat. It's a piece of foam. <laughs> you want the prizes? Yeah. I guess I gotta say no. No bothers. That's all we've got time for. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> There you 
go, man. The unofficial fan game, the wonderful world of Carl Pilkington. Uh, hey, that's Rich is the creator who made this in dreams. Uh, and he's done a fantastic fucking job with it. You know, I, I thought I was a super fan of it and then played this and, and it was just like, that is so freaking chock full of references. Like even just those credits, like every name in those credits is, is just another reference, uh, to, to something else that happens. So that's expertly made. It's so funny. If you're a Carl Pelkington, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant fan, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, and check it out for yourself. See if you can find all the clues and stuff. If if all this is new to you and, and you sound intrigued by it, definitely check it out because it is some really funny, great stuff. And it's it's so easy to find. And it's so, uh, uh, you know, just, just fucking awesome. Hilarious. All right. But that will do it for this video. Peace the fuck out, everyone. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate that, too. And, yeah, take it easy, everyone. See you later.